Today I'm going to talk about something that has been a broken technology for decades, for almost 50 years. And this is the idea of how do we house people in emergencies. Um, after World War II, there were about a million people that needed housing, and we formed the UNHCR. And it was a way that we can say, let's create dignified shelter on a short-term basis. Today, with the effects of, of, of climate issues, for the effects of conflict, with what's happening in Syria, we hit 16 million. So technically, those living in camps right now make up one of the largest cities in the world. About 50% of refugees live in Asia and 28% and 20, uh, live in Africa. Now this is a typical camp. This is a Ziatri camp in Jordan. Uh, and you look at it, it's, it's huge. It's a huge, expansive city of about 130,000 people. They've just built a neighboring uh, camp for 80,000 people. And these are the typical photos you see on television. Like, you know, look at this camp. We need to do something about it. What you don't see is when you dial down in, when you go from that CNN view to the reality of working in a camp. This is a street view. And this is, what, this is what tents look like. This is not the glamorous kind of, you know, celebrity flies in and, and, and shows you why we need to help. This is the reality of every day. Um, this is the UN tent. Now, the UN tent, in, it, in of itself, is a systems failure. Um, it, the new tent um, was introduced in 2006. Uh, and it happened after the tsunami. The reality is, is this $1,200 tent was designed in 1986. I was 13 years old when the UN tent was designed, and it hasn't uh, evolved since then. Now, I can build a house, a permanent house, for a family for $1,000. So there's a price issue here that, that we're spending $1,200 on a tent that's pretty inhumane. This is a community bathroom, which is basically a vortex of sexual violence, right? You know, I wouldn't want any of... Of, of my family to go in here to go to the bathroom at night. So you can see the camp itself um, has these issues. Now we've tried to break the status quo. We've tried to do incremental change, which is let's kind of allow camps to be much more spread out so it's a much more rural setting. Uh, but the reality of this is these camps get left behind. They cut the, um, the school programs, they cut the health programs, they cut the nutrition programs. We're gonna hear in the next year of, of uh, famine in South Sudan. The reality is most of the aid agencies cut their nutrition programs last year, and the fact of the famine doesn't have to do with the with, with, uh, uh, issue of, of food security. It's just because we cut them. So programs begin to get cut year after year. Incremental change. This is a $10 million camp uh, uh, funded by the UAE for, for Syrian refugees. And as you can see, you know, it's pretty inhumane when you consider that the average lifespan of a camp is between 7 to 17 years. Um, so now we've got into a situation that a lot of people are focused on how do we design a new tent, a better tent, a better shelter for people to live in. But the fact is that these are communities, they're living, working cities that go on for years and almost decades. And we need to think about a way that we don't just challenge the, way that the shelters that people live in, but the entire ecosystem of ref refugee camps. Why is it important? Because we're going to be suffering from something that we've all been spending billions of dollars on, which is climate change and climate adaptation. And so while we're looking at 16 million people without adequate and, and basic uh, human shelter right now, we're going to be seeing 50 million people in, in the coming decades. And how do we house them? How do you, how do you house a climate refugee? Right now, we don't, we don't uh, classify uh, people that are affected by climate change as refugees, so they don't get help. So as we're looking to the future, if we want to, br if we want to change the way uh, nomadic uh, um, communities move and how we live and work uh, when we're going to have, you know, a huge increase of, of hurricanes and typhoons, both here in the U.S. and Mexico, as well as in Asia, uh, as well as desertification. We need to rethink the way we do our, ref uh, our sheltering systems. Um, and if you're, if you're thinking uh, that this is just a developing world problem, bear in mind that next year about 140,000 children will be crossing into the U.S. border unaccompanied because of a variety of reasons. We don't have the resources to shelter them. So when we're looking in 30, 40 years, and we end up raising that number from 100 to a million, 
what happens here in the United States. So when you're thinking about prizes, I'd love you to figure out how do we rethink the refugee system and how do we rethink the way we house people in the short and long term. Thank you.